for the people because, you know, true, the true and faithful rasters, I should say, you know, we know who we are. You know, me holding back nothing, there's a lot of fraud and fake and, and a lot of fat here, they will call itself rasta, you can say, you know. So, we know who the true and faithful is and I know who I is, so don't feel no way. You know, the true and faithful know who they is. But, we live in the now. So, by needing to live in the now, and appreciate the now because we give thanks for the breath of life continually. So by living in the now and appreciating life, we can focus on righteousness in the now and stay within that righteousness because we stay within the now. When back before I was talking about, we're not in the now because our brain is planning five, six different corrupt kind of things at the same time. For the same reason. Mm. <laughs> That's interesting. That's interesting to say that. I just want to announce to the brothers. Um, um, I think I got an audio record of the whole thing so far, but um, I just noticed the recorder recorder has stopped around like it seemed like seventy one minutes total, but we really up to one thirty, like ninety something minutes. So it seems as though the enemy. The enemy walked through, and like when the call had dropped, I'm not too sure if it was around that time. Something, some surge, you know. You know, it says that that Hasatan, the adversary, the enemy op, he yeah. is prince of the ear, you know, and a lot of these things go through the ear. So he's been giving us uh, some, some, yeah. Yeah but, yeah, but still a good point my brother's making about the thoughts. I just want to share that right there because it seemed like the Pakua Nefesh part, you know, about how, you know, to save life is the most important thing. So if one had to, you know, um, you know, um, stop from their observance of the Sabbath to, to help to save human life, just as they would do with animal life, what Yeshua said is important. My brother was mentioning about the thoughts. Just I just started up recording again in the midst of what the, I was saying about the thoughts. And the key point is staying in the now. You know what I mean? Because we are yeah. kind of our mind is, I was saying that to the brother. Moshe, was I saying that earlier about, even I think the I came on around that time about thoughts. You know how the thoughts yeah. and the thinking would be like all over the place. You know, and I've gone through some experience in my past life where it was almost like I could understand why some people have some they call it medical um, health, uh, mental health related things because it seemed like my thoughts were racing and I could not control, I, I could not manage my own thoughts. That hasn't happened to me, you know, in, in decades, but there was a time, you know what I mean, when I experienced well, you know, that. They say, they say this about, because I grew up and see certain things, I see certain people leave the island and come back. We don't call them paro crazy, you know, we call them paro man. Mm. So, I have heard certain things, because some, certain of these people who left the island and come back paro were very intelligent people when they left, were like, never get a B in their life, they get all E's all the time and them kind of thing, they're highly intelligent. And go far in and come back, you know, head mess up. Right. So now, now you just say what you just say, right? I wonder if you have people who they gone mad in their head because of what you just said. They're highly intelligent. Mm. So they know so much and so much is going through their head that now they can't control the flow of information that they are receiving mm. rapidly wow. because of the height of their intelligence. They're, they are putting two and two together before the other two reach. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So by not being able to control that flow, that might that seems like like you say it could drive somebody mad. Mm. Because, yeah, because yeah. When you want to know what happened to this highly intelligent person. That's interesting. I never even thought about it like 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 yeah. that so much, but I thought about how other people, I heard other people having complaints. And I was thinking like, wow, by the grace, like like for the grace for, of, of Yah, there go I. You know what I mean? I could have been on that same route because I, re I recall having the same temptations. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know? I think this is what we talking about, the breathing. 
you know, control your breathing and like. I was meditate, just thinking like, that. <laughs> yeah. Slow down, slow down, breathe. Mm. And that that usually uh, catches, you know, the body and the mind together. You know, it's like in the now, you're in the body. Exactly. That's exactly what I just was thinking. That's that, that's living in the now. You know, we all we all were there. I, when the brother's speaking, I'm thinking about well, what. What was it that helped to regulate it? And 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 like I I said, one need an anchor, and then the spirit brought the spirit, the breath, the breathing, the thing that we yeah. often don't even think about when we talk about spirituality. We don't even think about you know how much we breathe and we we breathe um, unconsciously or it's it's like an involuntary function. But how important it is you ever you ever like catch a catch your breath on something and you're like wow this is sweet. Like, did you, you think about how mystic it is that we can breathe in. You know what I mean? And, and you know what I mean? The, yeah. the experience of breathing, yet we do it so many times without any thought. You know, that's what we were talking about, the giving thanks for the breath. You know, giving yeah. thanks for the breath of life, becoming more conscious of the breath okay. of life. You know what I mean? And in an interesting sense, in the first place the Sabbath um, was mentioned, in the first place that the Sabbath was mentioned, um, well, actually, the Sabbath as a verb, resting, in Genesis 2 and 2, it says, and he was refreshed. I don't know if you remember that part right there where it says, and he was refreshed. It's in, um, yeah. what's the, the rest part? Let me just go right here. It says, it says, which he had made, let's see, let's see. Um, yeah, um, so he rested. And he was refreshed. I don't know if the King James version brings that out, right? You know, he was rest. He rested, right, and was refreshed. There's a part that I remember now from when we do the pre-Sabbath like liturgy. You know, there's a part that says, "Why nafash? Why nafash? Why nafash?" Has a sense of um, like breathing. You know what I mean? There's a part where it says he rested and he was refreshed. I'm gonna find that part. I'm just I'm just just going over the part about resting and was refreshed. And it's in the liturgy, part of the Yehudi liturgy. I think it's there in the Hebrew, but sometimes words don't really come out quite the same in translation. But it almost brings to to mind, you know, um, oh, I, here, 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 he was rested and was. Here, I, I think I know where it's at. It's in another section right here. I got to share this one right here. Boom. Exodus 23 and 12. Six days thou shalt do thy work. Um, and on the seventh day thou shalt rest. Thine ox, thy ass may rest. Thy son, thy handmaid, the stranger may be refreshed. Here's one place. Refresh. People see it on the screen. It's the word nafash. Now, nefesh is so. Nafash means to take a breath. <laughs> Refresh oneself. Think about this. Sabbath. We just look at what the Torah says. Sabbath is rest in its essence. And it says that we should let uh, everyone should rest in our cipher. The animals too. Right? So that they can take a breath. Right? And refresh themselves. You know, literally, it means to breathe. To, and, 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 and in that sense of breathing is to refresh oneself, right? Oh, oh, it's Exodus 31 and 17. That's the one where it says the Sabbath is a sign between me and the sons of Israel forever. For in six days, Yahweh made heaven and earth. And on the seventh day, he rested. He Shabbated. He ceased from his active creation work. Right and was refreshed and why nafash and he took a breath he refreshed himself we can say you know what I mean but it has to do with the ear and breathing this is so mystic my brothers you know what I mean you know in the mystery of the father and the son you know he rested and was refreshed so to remember the rest so you can get refreshed <laughs> and take a breath. You know, take a, <sighs> you know what I mean? And that is the root of spirituality. Because people say spirit, I'm thinking, well, what are they thinking about? They're thinking about mental concepts. 
you know, like 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 mental mental things they want to call spirituality, and they're forgetting that the root word spirit has to do with air and breath, and therefore life. So, yeah, my brothers, the eye mentioning the whole refreshing part, you know, or, or the breathing. And look at the soul is also called the nefesh because the soul, she, nafash. Nafash means to take a breath. Nefesh is the soul. You see how the Hebrew kind of like, like on um, pattern work? Nafash, to take a breath, be refreshed. And nefesh is the soul, the psyche. That our soul, and the soul is interpreted in the nowadays time as the psyche. That's the Greek word for nefesh, is psyche. And they say psychology is the mind. And how you brothers, both of y'all, zoomed in on the breathing and taking a breath. Because people lose their mind. Think about it, lose their nefesh, which is the breathing creature. She is the breathing creature, feelings, emotion. But that she's the one that receives that breath he breathes. And his, his source allows her to live. And the soul is the life of the body, like the psyche. See, see, the Western Gentile, they don't believe in the soul in the Hebrew sense. They only believe in one part of the soul, and that's the feelings mind. The feelings mind, the mind of the feelings, the mind of the emotion is the soul. But it's an important integral part of our life, but it's also the breathing creature. So if one's kind of lose their mind or their psyche goes off. And if the Hebrew science is that the psyche, the mind has a lot to do with being refreshed or not refreshed. You see what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm taking from the Hebrew sense, the simple sense of the Hebrew, which makes even baby sense, breathing, refreshed. The soul, the breathing part of our being, the breath, the part that receives that breath and that life. Right now, in modern Greek and in the modern world, they don't believe in the soul in the sense that that's revealed to the Hebrews. They don't know the soul. They only know the soul as the mind. So psyche tends to only mean the mind. The mind, like the soul, is the seat of the emotions, the passions, the active will, one sense of self. That's what the soul is. So if when Yeshua said, my soul is sorrowful even to death, he said his active will, his, 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 his emotion, right? His emoting, his, 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 um, his, his affections, you know what I mean? Um, his sense of self. So it, it's a feminine aspect, you could say, of all creatures. But that is the tender aspect to he who be who he be. You see, he who be who he be, told us to keep the Sabbath for she, for that life, for that breath. <laughs> See, so the male and the female aspects were always there in the Hebrew, but, you know, some things, other people who got into it, you know, they, they, they just, I guess, they didn't see these things because it was for a time. Like I said, seal the book. But it's for us in this time to understand, you know, this, um, you know, this uh, link, you know what I mean? And there's a next verse that's linked directly with the two words rest and refresh. That's Isaiah 28 and 12. To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith y'all may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. Yet they would not hear. They would not shama, shama. They would not lo shama, like lo shamu. They, they would not heed. So this is the rest, causing the weary. Because if you're working six days a week, even nowadays, most of us maybe only work maybe, what, five days if we have a full working week, right? <laughs> if you're working six days, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, then you're kind of weary at the end of it. That's why when people say that they choose their own Sabbath, I get what you're saying, but you don't get what Yah said. So, so I get what you're saying, and that does make sense from a kind of a, a human, the human thought. But it's because the human thought is not registering the divine thought. You know what I mean? Because if you're taking another day in the week as like a rest day, the thing I would ask you is, are you sick? 
Are you sick? <laughs> no, for real. If you're sick, then then definitely rest up, man. Take a day off. You know what I mean? Take two if you need to. You know, there's no command against that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Even when it says six days you should work, it didn't mean that somebody couldn't take a day off. But if you did take a day off back then, you know what I mean? You have to think about how society was also. You know what I mean? If you took a day off from your farm and you only had, you was the only farm hand, you know, a lot of things would be neglected. You could maybe take a little lighter day if you had some servants or children or others who work with you. You know what I'm saying? On that level. But by replacing another day as a Shabbat day, in the sense of getting catching a rest, yes. But I would warn ones not to remember the Sabbath was made for man, it was made for humanity. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? It was made for that's a meditation one can have on the Sabbath. That's the question I ask. How is the Sabbath made for man? Just meditate. You, you know, not saying that it's not, but just ask yourself, reason. You know what I mean? How was it made for man and not man for the Sabbath? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because once you do, it's, it's coming out of that worldly, you know, all those worldly things that we probably have to deal with one way or the other, you know, during the so-called working week. You know what I mean? But then at the same time, you know, there's a, there's additional reasonings, and maybe we'll pick up on that at another time because that might have to be a whole other reasoning. But you remember like when the Yehudi, when when the Maccabee time and some earlier times when the people were attacked, you say our people oh, yeah. were attacked and they were so, their religious leaders, maybe in a good sentiment, sometimes things that have become like tradition, some tradition is still good. But some tradition sometimes changes as times changes. So we don't have to do this traditional thing that we did before because now we have other like, you know, technology and other things change. You know what I mean? And that's just the progress and a sort of evolution within how we live of, of people that hopefully is for the better. But the, but the, the Yehudis, they didn't fight back on the Sabbath day, right? You know, because their teachers told them that you know, uh, uh, you can't violate. They over, they overemphasize certain good things of scripture to such an extent that they made it like, you know, um, they they took it out of context. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the Sabbath didn't mean that you're not supposed to defend or protect or save life. <laughs> exactly. You know, especially your own, especially your own life. Mm, mm, mm. Ah, that's why the disciples, when they were walking through the through through the the cornfield, they got a little something to eat. You know, they grabbed a little something. They grabbed the snack on, on, on the run. You know, but how other people look, were looking at it, they were extreme. That's why I was asked this about like um, we talking about some people like not to get on to that, but like like entities they may call demons or spirit spooks or whatever. When I look at the Amharic, in one sense, the word for demon seems to come to, from a root sense of something being exaggerated. So I began to meditate. This is years ago, but I just shared this right here, that something that people call demonic are exaggerations. You know what I mean? Like, for example, food is good, but being a glutton is bad. You know, yep. even according to the scripture, whether one choose to or not, that's one's own choice. But drinking wine, I'm talking about wine, wine, a little wine is good. But drinking too much make you an alcoholic. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of things that are in their proper context, like moderation. You know what I mean? In all things, that your moderation be shown to all men is good. So there's a lot of things, you know, um... I know of some people who have drunk in too much water and, and died. Because, you know, if you drink too much water, the electrolytes in your body, you know, it's a spark. You kind of like drown out the spark. It's a very... It's you've a, been drunk yourself. Ah, you know what I mean? And I know this, and this is a whole other... This is like more personal, you know, um, because yeah. of the people that were affected by this. But, but they thought that they could take a, drink a lot of water and purge out themselves. They thought that they could purge whatever was in them, you know, whatever it is, that, that by drinking water. But they overdid it. And since they probably had another health condition, 
You know what I mean? It, it basically caused things to, you know, basically, basically they, 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 they drowned themselves. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So, so what I'm trying to say is that moderation. So even keeping the Sabbath, Yeshua was telling us, yes, it's a rest. It's made for man to rest and to refresh, rest and refresh. But the Pekua Nefesh, the Pekua Nefesh, saving a life. Literally in Hebrew, it's like saving a life. It's the principle that was known even in Yeshua. To me, Yeshua is the first one, not the first one, but Yeshua was saying this to them, that the principle that Yah has revealed that all of you hypocritical other rabbis know, our rabbi was saying, is that the preservation of human life, it overrides virtually any other religious or, or, or Torah duty is preservation of human life. You know what I'm saying? So when a person is in like a danger, you know, any, any commandment, right? Like, you know, command not to do an action of the Torah, it becomes inapplicable, right? In the sense of when there is a danger. And many Yehudi in, 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 in Jewish, Hebrew, Israelite history had to learn these things, sometimes the hard way. You know what I mean? And, and you can see why some people will turn off to Yah, to Jah, to the Almighty. Because sometimes their religious leaders or their spiritual leaders sometimes go too far. They might mean well. You remember the whole thing about the Garden of Eden where it said, said don't, don't eat of the tree? And then Eve says, don't touch of it? And so by saying don't touch of it is not what Yah commanded. Somebody can try to advise somebody and say, well, he said don't eat of it, but you know what? Don't touch it. Don't even go near it. You know what I'm saying? But that is where the bad things concerning Sabbath came in and what Yeshua, what Jesus was rebuking. He's saying that these things, these extra things, you're adding to it. You're adding that and you're overemphasizing that above what Yah commanded it. It doesn't mean we can't have a reasonment on what this verse is and try to suss it out for ourselves. But whenever we take our mind reasoning, as we as mind can reason on something, and then we make that more than what he says directly on the same subject matter. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Basically, we're going to have problems. You know what I mean? So um, the Sabbath is to rest and refresh. And um, yeah, my brothers, I, I already know it's already getting late right now. Um, I was going to share, brother, brother um, Moshe, you still there? Yes, I I know you and the fam. You know, also, I don't want to hold the yeah. eye up from your Sabbath. Yeah, we keep, huh? Yeah, we keep, yeah, we, yeah. Go ahead. We keep the Shabbat, you know, dinner, you know, and. The Seder, uh, yeah, the family the dinner. Wife, Breaking the bread. Yeah, right. yeah, that's what my brother showed me. He showed me some things that I would advise all of our Rastafari called Children of Faithful to check it out. This is why we do the Rastafari Jews and Rastafari Israelites and even the Hebrew for Rastafari to bring out these things that early Ethiopia back in the BC times was already rocking the true principles that they were rocking with. So some things in Judaism that other Jews do is things that ancient Jews did. There's some things that modern Jews do that we didn't do. There's some bad things that they might do or refer to the Babylonian Talmud was not just white Jews writing. I mean, if we're going to speak the truth, Right. Because there was one camp of Israelites out there that was talking about in the kingdom, they'll be able to have young, very young girls, you know, almost like it seemed almost like I hate to even say it, but the, 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 I call it like this. Cause I don't want to get a strike grape to grape them grapes, you know, grapes them, you know what I mean? To grapes them, you know what I'm saying? On that particular level, you know, and their reasoning, I understood what they were looking at in Torah, but I could see how they were exaggerating some things after their own lust. You know what I'm saying? So if we take what they said on that area of scripture, that's like the Babylonian Talmud. So we were thinking that it came from, from other Jews, but a lot of it did not come from other Jews. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's almost like saying that... Um, well, you know, I'll get off of that point because we're going to just address that maybe hopefully another time where we get into what is it really. But on Friday Eve, the same book I was talking about, Learn Hebrew for English Speakers, a book I got from the library back in 87. 
and I still have this copy. It's one of the older books. But here there's a section that says like at a synagogue. Synagogue is a Greek word. It means a gathering together. Um, Yehudi would call it the Beit Knesset or the Moed, the Moed, like the appointed place. I call it the Jewish church because that's where the church, the original church came from the, what the Jews did, right, actually. You know, it was just that we were following our rabbi, Yeshua, and not the other rabbis that Yeshua warned us about, right, On who said one thing. He even said, observe what they observe, but don't do after their works. So that's one reason why I study these things as well, because of what Yeshua says to observe what they observe, but don't do after their works. Could they say one thing and do another, you know? But on Friday eve of Sabbath, toward the evening, I'm just reading this portion here, it is the duty of every man. This is what's done by tradition, and this tradition, generally speaking, is good. But this tradition is not command. That's what I want to say to everyone. On Friday eve of the Sabbath, toward evening, it is the duty of every man to go to the gathering while it is still light. And he should take his children also with him to recite the prayer of the inauguration of the Sabbath. Something like what we share on the air, some of the basic words that are from areas of scripture, right? Before stars appear, we light candles to honor the Sabbath. Another point too is we review the Sabbath as being like a mother, as Sabbath being like a woman. And even in the Hebrew scriptures, the Sabbath is referred to in some key areas as she, as she, the Sabbath as she. And what's interesting is the Beta Israel, the Ethiopian Jews or Beta Israel of Ethiopia, they also looked at the Sabbath as a woman that intercedes for, for Israel with God. So it's kind of an interesting, both in modern Judaism, coming from ancient teachings and also among the Ethiopian Yehudi and in reading the Torah, we see that there's three points of reference that the, that the Sabbath is likened to be like a bride in modern um, among many Yehudi today. And among the Beta Israel of Ethiopia, the Sabbath is regarded as like a woman, like a mother that intercedes for her children. You know what I mean? Like when they honor her, right? <laughs> Before stars appear, we light candles in honor of the Sabbath. Right? I'm just pointing this out right here. These are just some things right here. So that's usually what is done, and that's done like toward, toward the, um, toward the, um, um, how can you say, like towards the evening, ones come together, the man and them, they come together, right? And like say, say if, if evening, if the sun is, is off the horizon by say, say seven o'clock, that means we might gather together Friday evening around six to seven. Almost like we would go to Bingi sometimes. We did the same thing with Aya Bingi because it's the line of the tribe of Judah. We would gather together. And so now we ride Bingi all night. But really in the communities, it's only like a couple of hours, maybe an hour or, or, or so. We come together, you know, and go through some scripture, some praise and everything, salute one and one, and then go home. By time it's like night. By the time the sun is off the horizon, we're with our family. And then the woman of the house, like we have a woman, right, in the, in the, in the trod and tradition, she will prepare a table. She will also give the first blessing. You know, the word of blessing that we play with our sister Mary Rose on the ear. She'll give that word of blessing. She'll light two candles, you know, for the table, recite a blessing, and then the Sabbath will officially begin. You know, there'll be some reasoning, eating, so forth and so on. The man should say Proverbs chapter 31, verses 10 to 31. Near the end of the meal or the end of the gathering, he should say that, recite it loudly. It's talking about the virtuous woman, the woman of power, the woman of strength, right? Um, and then that seals up, you know, the rest of, you know, the, rest of the time the family is together. Usually what is also done is food is prepared for two days. Not, not two days, but for the next day. So all the food that would be eaten traditionally on the Sabbath day. And now some would choose to fast. That's a whole other reason. I'm not saying that one shouldn't, but it's not commanded to fast. What was commanded is that you do no work. You prepare whatever food that you prepare that you're going to eat or sup on on the next day so you can rest as much as possible. You know, you don't have to busy yourself with other things. And, and besides, if you have a household with little children and others, 
You know what I mean? You know, babes, you got to prepare for that. You, you know, they're not going to fast. <laughs> you know what I mean? Jah is not, Yah is not like that. But then after the day goes through, the day people would basically spend in their own gates. Traditionally, when we were in the land, people spending in their own gates, you know, with their family and whatnot. Usually towards the evening of the sad Sabbath day, like when the evening is coming in, people will come out. Sometimes even today they have bonfires, like in Ethiopia, they may have a bonfire. This is usually a time when mine and mine and women and family and children come out and reason. So often uh, Saturday night, they'll, be, they'll go through a kind of a gathering. Mine and them might reason on ting, the daughters to get together the children. Sometimes they go all the way into the first day. And usually on Sunday, what we would do, the community would get together looking at the week ahead. That's why the early Christians also gathered on the first day of the week. Also because Christ raised on that first day and that's the day of, of the first fruits and all of that as well. So I just want to point this out just kind of quickly in brief relief. So once you get an overview and if there's any like, you know, other details, you know, um, you know, I'm just, I'm just scrolling through this to highlight. So on the next day, the Sabbath day, now here's what people do today in exile. Early in the morning, all the congregation will go to the gathering for morning, for, for morning service. And sometimes for like after midday service, they'll read like, you know, certain things. Whoever is the teacher, the rabbi, or the, you know, the scholars of the gathering, usually 10 men, in order to have a, a church in the, in the Hebrew sense, you needed to have like 10 men who were Torah and gospel observant in that sense. And they were like the foundation, 10 men that could devote time to the gathering, right? And then one or two would bring forward a reason, man, like in the season, you know, chant a couple of the songs and give praise. And on the conclusion of the Sabbath, right? After the evening service, it's the duty to recite like a closing over the chalice, a cup, you know, so there'll be like bread and a chalice. I say the chalice because then it was wine. Others might use other form of wine. You know what I'm saying? Um, but over the cup in the evening, you know, and there'll be a seal up basically looking forward to the, to the next Shabuah. So I just want to give the eye kind of a traditional overview. So when Brother Moshe said that he would um, he would sometime maybe check out certain, you know, um, um, Torah teachers certain rabbis or Torah teachers congregation. Brother Seymour said, if he check anything out, it has to be something that is, 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 is almighty or, or definitely truth. You know what I mean? Up full, <laughs> you know, up full in this context, because you want to make sure you keep the Sabbath as a delight and as an outro. I know the I, them and I and I as well getting ready right here as an outro. I like to give the I this one verse from the prophets to meditate on. Right where he said, if you call the Sabbath a delight, I don't know if the item know this verse. I'm, I'm sure you come across it. You heard this one, delight, because here John was reproving them that it's it's um, Isaiah 58 and 13. And I'll just read this one verse. This verse is kind of, uh, you know, well, well, you know, let me just read it. Isaiah 58, 13. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath. <laughs> from doing thy pleasure on my holy day and call the Sabbath a delight, a holy of Yahuwah, of he who be who he be, the almighty, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words, right? Then it says in verse 14, the end of the chapter, then shalt thou delight thyself in Yahweh, in he who be who he be, Hakadosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hashem, the Holy One, blessed be he, blessed be the name, and I will cause thee, the eye, to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Yaakov, of Jacob, thy father, for the mouth of Yahweh, of Jehovah, hath spoken it. So this chapter, I would say, is a good many chapter. Because at the end, he's basically, you know, um, saying that, you know, the way that ones were keeping the Sabbath was incorrect to the principle. Like, turn thy foot away, you know, turn away thy foot fr from the Sabbath. Almost like stepping on the Sabbath. Like, you're going out, doing this, you're walking around, you know, like. 
and doing your own pleasure. That's what you want to do on this holy day, right? And call the Shabbat. It's a delight. And this is the key thing for it to be an oneg. How is it pleasantness? And we know when we really are fully keeping the Sabbath in spirit and in truth, where it's a rest, a refresh, and overall, it's a pleasantness. It's a delight. You know what I mean? You know, there's, there's that, you know what I'm saying? You know, it's, 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 it's a delight. And it's the holy, it's the setting apart of he who be who you be, like the brother said. You said earlier, you know, setting, setting apart for him. And for that time, it's honorable. And you, we're honoring him, the almighty, the creator. Because remember, the Sabbath command goes back to creation. So Sabbath, you can just meditate on creation. <laughs> That's a whole medi. <laughs> you know what I mean? You may need another day or two, right? Not doing that own yeah. ways. This is what he was reproving. That sometimes I don't want to like, I'm not talking about people who are listening. I'm not saying this specific to anybody, but it's a general thing. I've done it too. You know, you figure you can do your laundry on that day, so forth and so on. You know, yeah, I guess you could call it a donkey in a ditch, but it doesn't qualify to that. But if you want to do that, you can do that. You know what I mean? Donkey in the ditch, saving life, yes. Washing your, your laundry. If you were, if, hey, if you would have got to, you, you got to do what you got to do. You know, so this kind of went off right here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna seal it. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna seal it right here, cause, cause, I, I feel in a sense. Hold on for a moment. 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 Hold for a moment. Sorry about that, bro. I'm sorry, bro. No, 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 no. I'm sorry about that, bro, bro. I know that I was talking right then. I just want to bring the brother back on the line because I just want to say this. I, I, I don't want to vibes in myself like i want to step on no man sabbath time you know what i mean or sabbath, actually sabbath prep time this is like the sabbath prep time as we prepare our hearts and minds for the for, for for the day you know for that for that time and everything but yeah man yeah man you see i didn't want to say that right there you know like if you've got to wash their clothes or do this or that that might be life-saving you know that might be on a certain level <laughs> You know, uh, life saving. Why you going there? They don't need to know that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But um, I just want to. Yeah, they, they, you know, diapers, pant diapers, you know. Yeah, diapers, diapers. Baby need to feed. Listen, notice that. Baby need to feed. It's like if a man wanna fast and he don't wanna eat nothing. But it's going to be delightful to him. He's going to be able to honor. He's going to be able to rest and be refreshed. So be it. But for, for the Isha, the wife, for the children, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? The little children, they got to, you know. <laughs> so so it might be. It might be. It was interesting the phone drop right there. But the main part of this was finding one's own pleasure. Doesn't mean that you cannot find pleasure and delight in the Sabbath. But the key is your own pleasure. You know, there's things that we know are our own. Like the brother said, we did things because we like them. <laughs> you know, we like to do certain things. We have to kind of wrestle and overcome that. The main part was speaking thine own words. Because for most of us in the week, if we're doing different things, we don't have a whole lot of time. You know what I mean? To be in, in his mind. You know, like on that full, like almost like a full day. You know what I mean? You know, if one do it fully one has from the morning hour all the way to the evening hour just to be in his words and to speak the key thing is we we should speak but we shouldn't speak our own words see he just said finding thine own pleasure nor speaking that means that we should keep basically keep quiet if he said that but he said find our own pleasure nor speaking our own words you know what i mean so listen to readings reasonings concerning his way and just be refreshed you know and breathe focus on one's breath and 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 give enough thanks for the breath of life but brothers i want the item to seal this up i think we do have to return to this subject matter because this is a subject matter that come up every seven days <laughs> yeah man yeah man I, I. Oh, oh. <laughs> amen, amen. You know, it's if one speaking a 
in a tongue, another or least even that one should give a <laughs> give a interpretation. You got interpretation to give the people? Oh, the blessing, yeah, the blessing, the blessing over the bread, you know, bless the bread, uh, brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, you know, in, in, in Yeshua's name to the Father, Elohim Ha'ab, you know, may your, your, your bread and your chalice, your cup, you know, some might have wine, you know, but have a chalice still, then nonetheless, may it be blessed and highly favored. By Shem Yeshua and the King of Kings Christ, Yesus Christos Ketachin. Glory be the King. Yes, I. Yes, I. Yes, I. So, Shabbat Shalom, my brothers. Um, thank you. Thank you. This was a special. This was very. You, we probably need to work on doing something like this a little more often. Yes, I. By His will. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.